true genius is very rare. It uh, comes along once in a lifetime, once in a generation. And, uh, you know, it revolutionizes the game, revolutionizes how we see life. And oftentimes these geniuses are not appreciated in their own time. It's only, you know, years later we look back and, and really say, man, this guy was just on a whole other level, you know? Um, this is not that, no, no, this is, um, this is a disturbed individual who created a product that nobody asked for and really doesn't improve upon any existing products. No, this is the Kozak Cut Gold Stick. Hey, still here, still interested, morbidly intrigued. All right, well, let's talk about it. This abomination you see before you is the Kozak Cut Gold Stick. This is what would appear to be some sort of wood panel piece that you might pick up at a Home Depot, which then this shaft was carved out of. Um, and then this is really the crux of the Kozak cut innovation is this uh, paddle of uh, the uh, blade here. Now, as you can see, it's not like a normal blade that's just you know, one straight blade. You got the uh, the end piece here that is apparently supposed to be on the ice when you're standing up, moving around normally on your feet. And then the uh, genius part of it is when you're in the butterfly, you kind of turn the stick a little bit and this baby here covers your five hole. Now, kind of the problem with that is you only ever have a piece this big, even less than the width of my thumb to my pinky finger, covering the ice at any given time. Whereas on a regular gold stick, uh, you have a much larger piece. Now, the claim is that you know when you're in the butterfly, oh, a regular one, you don't cover your five hole good. Kind of true, yes. Um, however, if you saw my previous recent videos on a shorter paddle and Bobrovsky stick, uh, you can fix that a lot with just going with a shorter paddle. Um, also, I mean, if your butterfly is really good, your pads are gonna be blocking a lot of those shots even if you don't happen to get it with your stick. Um, but yeah, so the solution from a one Mr. Jonathan Kozak was to come up with this. Uh, I just told you the drawback to having less of your stick on the ice at any given time. Now, granted, this is a prototype, I'm assuming. This is not the final thing, but this is what I had to go by to try this out. Like I said, this looks like some piece of wood you would use as paneling in a room or something. I, I don't know how else to describe it. It's very bottom heavy. This top part is very flimsy. It bows very easily. You cannot play the puck with it. You cannot exert any kind of force on this end or it will break. Bottom part is very heavy. The blade itself is, you can kind of see the beginnings of it here. It's two piece. It's not a continuation of the paddle solidly all along. It's its own piece that's somehow connected there. And that probably is what explains the enormous amount of duct tape that's actually holding the stick together. Um, and aesthetically, we have this uh, beautifully hand-painted TKC logo along the paddle. <clears throat> um, 
Now, moving along from this genius innovation part here, we go to the shaft, which if you're old enough to remember the old Curtis curve, had this little piece here where you know you put your hand there and then the thought was this curves down to seal off the ice when you're using a paddle down motion. Now, the thing I don't get is why on this stick it comes back up at the end. So we're gonna, we're gonna seal off this part of the ice, but if a puck goes on this end, well, fuck it, that's going in for no apparent reason. Yeah. And uh, so pretty much poke checking is not existing with this because while it is technically possible to eventually move your hand up it, uh, you're not gonna be able to do it any, with any kind of speed. Um, you know, by the time you get your hand up it, the guy's probably gonna be around you or whatever. And like I said, with this particular prototype or whatever, this thing is so flimsy, You, if you try to poke check, it would break or something anyway. It wouldn't even hold up to that. Um, you can see the, the thickness of this blade. It's uh, about at least double, if not maybe even more of the thickness of a regular blade of a goal stick. So, yeah, that's the... Uh, that's the Kozak cut goal stick. Um, so this guy and this stick in the goalie circles has been pretty infamous over the past decade, I would say. Uh, just like a running joke. Um, if you see, I'm not gonna really get into the guy himself too much because that would take a whole other video that could last like 45 minutes. Uh, but if you're really interested, look him up on Instagram or Facebook. Jonathan Kozak is his name. It's... Uh, Aside from even just the sticks, it's it's an adventure to say the least. Uh, this guy's life and what he posts. Now, there's not this is not the only stick he um, came up with. I mean, there's one I would say maybe the Kozak Cut Light, if you want to call it that. So it's the same blade part with the same gimmick. However, it's got a traditional shaft. It, to its credit, I will say at least this is sturdy. It's about as sturdy as any other wood stick, if you ever would even still use a wood stick at this point, would be. So you could actually technically maybe poke check with this, try to play the puck with this a little more, but you really can't play the puck. There is, there is no curve on this blade. You have less, like I said, you have less of it to work with because if you're standing up and trying to play the puck, so you have this much to work with right here. You can't do like a heel to toe kind of flinging the puck with it. You know, it's, you're, you're not getting any kind of force really trying to play the puck. Other than that, it's, it's the same thing. I, I would say out of the two, at least this is a little better built, a little more, I would actually call it a stick. Um, but yeah, there's, <laughs> uh, there's no reason to use this. It's just a failed idea. It's, you know, one of these things, I don't know, this guy got it in his head that I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix a, a problem and come up with this. And yeah, it's, uh, it's gonna be a no for me, dog. However, I did wanna give it at least somewhat of a try on the ice. So uh, I bravely took it to a pickup session recently and uh, I'm gonna show you what happened there. Uh, I just, I couldn't use it for the actual like pick up, play, game part of it, whatever. I just use it for warm ups, and that was the most I could bring myself to use it for. But uh, I pretty much what I thought was going to happen, what I thought these sticks were, played out just by using it in the warm ups. So uh, I'm going to just roll some footage from that, me going to uh, pick up hockey. Uh, and then uh, come back here and wrap up this video. All right, guys. Well, uh, we're going to open. Well, not we. I, the royal we. I'm going to open pickup tonight. Uh, going to use the Kozak cut sticks. I'm driving there right now. Now I got to tell you. Normally, I'm not one to get embarrassed. I've made a fool out of myself in public many a times. I'm a little embarrassed about bringing these fucking things that look like somebody found them in uh, war-torn Sarajevo. But, uh, you know, the people demanded it. 
I'm nothing if not a people pleaser, so God damn it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring them out on the ice and give it a go. So uh, let's see how this goes. All right, so I'm just going to kind of talk over this video while it's, I'm screen recording it on my phone. Uh, there's me getting in the goal with the Kozak cut stick. Um, I didn't really have, a, I don't have like a mic I can wear so I could kind of like talk it out while I'm on the ice. And uh, the only other camera I use when I to film myself play is GoPro, which is from behind. So you can't really see the stick at all from that angle. So I wanted to just set up my phone to film from the front here. So uh, yeah, so here's a typical ridiculous uh, warm up, quote unquote. You get there, you see, <laughs> there's me trying to play the puck with this stick, but it's so flimsy, you can't put any force behind it. That's why I'm like gingerly trying, and that's the force. That's the force I can generate right there. That's the best you can hope for with this stick because the shaft is so flimsy. So, uh, yeah, more guys just, you know, skating right in and trying to fucking go top shelf because that makes a great warm up. Okay, so this was the one shot that went completely five hole and, comp and the stick. It whiffed. The one thing the stick is supposed to do, and of course this guy skates right in front when this happens, so I'm going to try to just do it like frame by frame. So yeah, the stick bloop, just goes right by the stick and hits my pad. That was about the only shot I got that was straight on five hole. Because like I said, these fucking geniuses here are trying to go top shelf and warm up. and do, You'll see this other guy later that just... I, I, I don't understand what their point of this is. But anyway... So, yeah, I mean, this thing is super bottom heavy. I could feel it, you know, like, and what makes it worse is just how flimsy the shaft is. So, like, the shaft is flimsy and light as hell, and the, the bottom half is just a break. It's like trying to play with a sledgehammer, basically. Um, the, you know, as long as the, uh, the puck hits the paddle, it's probably not going to break because it's so heavy and, and that part is sturdy. But, like, if I were to take a shot to the shaft, that a shot would do it uh trying to play the puck aggressively would would break the shaft it's yeah it's a weak point and i mean that's part of the whole thing of this stick is that stupid uh bastardization of a fucking curtis curve you'll see a little later i like purposely try to do some paddle down stuff just to test it out but of course these guys are also trying to shoot high so it, it really didn't work out i mean Ideally, I would have just gotten on the ice with like a shooter and, and film this, but I just don't have any ice time available where it's just me able to fuck around on the ice. So, I mean, the closest I could get to it was uh, doing doing a warm up in this. See, there's okay, so I'm kind of like trying to test out the paddle down shit there. No, no, yeah, it goes it just goes up high. It's great, great warm up. Good. Talk. Hey, look, I, I made a, a save with the uh, paddle. Bloop. So, uh, yeah, it just, and the, the thing is when you put it in the position that it's meant to, to cover the five hole, when you're down, it, it puts your blocker kind of far away from your body and it kind of opens up, uh, that hole between your, uh, Oh, oh God, this fucking guy. Let's let's watch this genius. And I'm gonna do a spinorama. Nope, no, nope, I left the puck. And in fact, I whacked you in the fucking face with my stick. Oh, I'm sorry, man. Yeah. Okay, get the fuck out of here. Oh, and you'll see that guy uh, come back later. He he keeps trying to do that, and never once succeeding. He, the fucking puck would never leave the ice onto his stick, and any attempt that he tried. Oh, look, look then he tried doing it, and there he got frustrated. Oh shit. Why can't I do it? Because you're not a fucking computer player in NHL 21. That's why, you fucking idiot. Again, anytime you see me like moving the puck and it's so slow, I mean, not that I'm great at playing the puck anyway, but you just you can't put any force behind that stick to play the puck. And, I mean, I dare not take the... Uh, the duct tape off because it's it's not a one piece uh, paddle and blade. There's definitely something going on. Like I, you know, I can't see under the the tape, but just from the little bit I can see, it it's a like a two piece situation going on there. So I did not dare take the duct tape off. So that horrible shit is still on the the stick here. I mean, 
on the one plus side, you could say I'm still playing with it, I guess. I mean, I guess if you absolutely had to use it, you could. <laughs> There's just no benefit to the stick over a regular stick that I could tell at all. But, uh, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm making some saves. Uh, I don't know what else. Okay, so that was, that's like the true Kozak cut stick that I was using there. Then I also got the one that has a, a regular shaft to it and then still has the Kozak cut part on the blade. So that's what I went to go switch it to. But I didn't take many shots with this one because by the time I got back in net with it, I only took a few shots and then they wanted to start playing the pickup session. <clears throat> So, yeah, I mean, at least this one felt a little better because of the, the shaft wasn't just terrible. Like, it's, it's about the sturdiness of a regular wood stick you would get. But, you know, again, it's still heavy. And that whole Kozak cut thing on the bottom, like, there's no benefit to it because you never have that much of, it, of the blade on the ice, whether you're using the, the end piece for when you're standing up or even the piece that's supposed to uh, cover the five hole when you're down. It's just... <laughs> He, he tried to in, reinvent the wheel with this, and it, it's just not not feasible. Like, I understand the idea of trying to cover the five hole better when you're in your butterfly, but that, if anything, that's done by the trend of uh, a shorter paddle. Like, uh, if you saw my Bobrovsky stick video, it kind of talks about that. So, yeah, that, that's basically it. That's the end of the video there. Uh, yeah. So there you go. That's, uh, that was my experience with the Kozak Cut goal stick. Uh, like I said, it's pretty much what I thought and not useful at all. And nobody's going to want to want to buy this thing. Um, as I said before, if you're really intrigued by this guy, you can look him up on Instagram, Facebook, and uh, go down a rabbit hole, deep, dark rabbit hole that uh, I mean, you'll, you'll get some laughs probably cry it's, it's an emotional roller coaster but uh, yeah so this isn't really a review that's probably like useful as far as somebody actually wanting to buy this stick but I know this stick this whole idea this guy has just been so crazy that anything to do with him attracts people's curiosity so uh, you know when I saw that he was selling these sticks I just figured I had to get some just for shits and giggles man so yeah, that's just a little walk down this road. But uh, so after this video, uh, next one we're gonna get back to some actual hockey stuff, actual reviews. But uh, hope you enjoyed this. Maybe had a little laugh about this, and uh, see you in the next one.